We're live. We are live. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the BBL show. This is uh, the third one in a week. We've been on a roll. Don't ask us why, but just it felt right. So, anyway, um, Tony Camper here, and uh, we actually have a good turnout today. A lot of the crew, uh, the BBL fam in the house. I'll go ahead and uh, introduce everybody. Start off with uh, the Barbies herself. Uh, Miss Carla. Hey guys, what's up? And don't forget the the, the doggy as well. He'll be uh, <laughs> running around the entire episode. Um, also, we got uh, Smalls, Vaughn. What's up, man? Yeah, what's up, yo? <laughs> and uh, Big Will, say what's up, bro. Hey, what's up? All right, and uh, the man behind the scenes, uh, my partner in crime, Larry. Hey, what's up? And last but not least, our special guest for the night, Big Crip. Say what's up. Hey, what's up? What's up, folks? How we doing? All right, so um, all you barbell lifers who've been around for a while, you know... Uh, you know Big Crip. He's uh he's been in the group for a while now, and um his story is actually a pretty good one. Um, you know he popped on the scene, and uh, we were pretty small back then. I think we had maybe a thousand or, or so members, and um, he just popped out of nowhere and uh, started posting pictures and videos. And um, you know with all due respect, Crip's not a big guy. You know he he's just uh. What? How much you weigh, Crip? Uh, currently I weigh 140 even. Really? Okay. Well, what were you back then? Like 110, 115, like soaking wet. He was real skinny. And, yeah. Uh, Larry can show some some of the pictures, the before and after. But um, when he came on the scene, you know, he didn't care about none of that. You know, there's there's people in the group post big big guys, you know, posting posting pictures and guys posting pictures, uh, videos of them lifting all kinds of weight, and, uh, you know, Crip just jumped right in and, and joined with us, and, uh, you know, being 115, he didn't care, you know, he was still sh proud of what he had, and he was he was on a mission to to improve himself, and, and anyway, well, one the thing picture... About, one thing about Crip, though, that was, was very interesting was... As you can see in this picture, he didn't have weights, or he couldn't get to a gym, or anything like that. And what what made him unique is, even though he had a lot of things working against him to build muscle, he also was still trying to get gains by any means ne are necessary. So you see these water jugs on there. He filled them up, and he was benching those and posting videos benching those. Yeah, and that was something that really you know, inspired a lot of us in the group, myself especially, you know, I'm like, people are always making excuses, you know, you know, people have access to gym, people have, they own gyms, you know, they have the means to, to, to get what, what they want, and they still make excuses, and then you see Crip here, you know, he, he, he didn't have, he had limited uh, resources, so he made the best with what he had, and he was determined to, you know, put on muscle and get strong and, you know, fucking hit the weights. And so what he made here, um, Crip, tell us a little, about, a little bit about this, uh, this bench right here. Oh, that's, that specific bench. Oh, man. Uh, well, it started out as I had that aluminum bench frame, and it was in pieces. It was just garbage. And I had uh, talked to my pops, and he had a... Uh, I had a small a small scrap pile and I got a very small like weak it wasn't it's not that strong you couldn't put more than 150 pounds on it I mean I couldn't pull up on it or anything like that 
But I just had that bar, and I took some wood, and I laid it across where your your lats would or your uh, traps would go, and your whole back would lay, you know, for your head and everything. And I taped it on there. I just had some scrap wood. I taped it on there, put the bar on there, and then I thought I have no weights, you know. And uh, I just thought about it. I had a bunch of uh, gallon jugs from when my water had gone out, and I had to have water jugs. And I, you know, I thought about it, you know, eight pounds to the gallon, you know, if I can put, you know, four on each side, you know, I'm, I'm pushing more than I've ever pushed there. So I just started with two and started moving my way up. I tied them together and, and that was that. And that was my start. Yeah. I've never, I've never seen anything like that. And that was definitely, you know, a lot of people in the group were showing love when they, when they were seeing your posts. And, uh, you know, that's one thing that separates the barbell life from other groups, um, you know, if, if you were to post something like that in, you know, some of these these random groups that are out there, you would have got a lot of flack. You would have got a lot of people hating and laughing and, you know, talking shit, clowning. And uh, that's one thing that I love about, you know, our group is people came out and showed love, and they were, they were actually, like, supporting you and liking and, you know, telling you to, you know, keep getting it and, you know, thanks for uh, inspiring them and things like that. And um, that was when you came on the scene and uh, you started posting your videos and your pictures. Um, you know, I'll let you tell this story, but um, we put together a. Uh, you know, we were so touched and, and inspired that we wanted to we wanted to do something for you, to help you out, and we put together um, a GoFundMe. Well, yeah, a GoFundMe called Operation Operation Crips. Um, I'll let you go ahead and tell that story, Chris. Uh, yeah, basically, I was just, one day I was just lifting and I think I had posted a, a picture or video that morning, and I always like to get my videos, I have good music, hype up, you know, good workout, and, uh, he, uh, Tony had messaged me, and he said, he said, hey man, you know, like, what's going on with your situation, you know, where do you come up with this, you know, wh what are you doing, you know, trying to, he was like trying to find out more about me and what I was doing, and I said, you know, man, I just, I live off a of disability for right now, and uh, things were, I was just trying to make do with what I had, and he understood where I was coming from, and he said, hey man, you know, just like, just out of nowhere, it was like, hey, we can start a GoFundMe and see if we can get some people to donate and get you a real bench and real equipment and stuff. And I was like, me? Like, me? Like, I'm just like nobody. I am nobody. I just started lifting, like, within a few months of that. And I was like, you know, it, I was starstruck that, that this guy I've never even met has all these people in his group and all these followers, and he's got to come up, and he wants to bring me up with him. And I just thought that was so cool, and I was like, all right, let's do it. You know, I'm not going to – who am I to say no? You know, that would almost be rude. And uh, it started going, and then I, I feel like within within a couple of days, we were up, you know, a couple hundred dollars. Next thing you know, before it ended, it was at like $700, and it was just like people I haven't even seen in the group before, really. They were uh, They were just down, and they were like, here you go. And then next thing you know – Everything was shut down, set to go, and I have people now sending me other gym stuff. They like sending me gym clothes, like shorts and stuff, and I was just so I was like, I almost wanted to cry. It was so cool to have yeah, a bunch of people cool. that you don't know. You, these people, like, who am I? That's how exactly how I felt. Who am I for all this kindness? It was awesome. Well, I mean, when that happened, it like I said, it was really a turning point with the group because. Uh, you know, we were we were we were kind of planning some stuff, but at the moment it was just kind of a small, you know, tight knit group. Um, but when when we put that out there, the response was amazing. I mean, people like you said that don't even really post or you know aren't very active just came out the woodworks, and everyone was donating, and you know, uh, we I think the uh, amount we were going for was one eighty. And we hit that in less than 24 hours, and we yeah, it was quick. like doubled or tripled. It. I mean, everyone was just, and people were messaging me like, "Hey, what's his address? I want to send him stuff. I want to send him shirts. I want to send him this, this, and that." 
Yeah. And I was like, wow, blown away. But um, I think all in all, what what did we send you? A bench and uh, you guys sent me. I was sent uh the Gold's Gym dumbbell set. Uh, on a big twelve, like twelve gallon. Uh, it was a big, big tote. Uh, on uh mass gainer, and animal packs. The the big jar of animal packs. Uh, there was a shaker, uh, and and the bench. You know, the bench was like home. When I got that thing, I had to, I almost had to load it up on a skidster and bring it down to my house. I'm like, I'm not even big enough to lift this yet, so I. I had my old man help me load it into the passenger seat of my car, and I drove right down here to my house, and I just started, I, I couldn't get it out of my car. I had to tear it down and, like, take it out piece by piece, and it was that day I said, everybody, you can go do what you guys are doing, friends. I got stuff to do. I'm setting up my new bench. I'm going to get this workout, and it was amazing. I get, it was a big moment for us because at that time, you know, we didn't realize how how. The, how close the group was and how support everybody and, you know, just the power of, you know, being able to do that and help someone out because, you know, Tony was like, what do we do here? We want to help him. And I was like, well, let's, you know, we, we got to donate something. So seeing that happen in 24 hours and then, you know, of course, we're looking for a price for, you know, the good equipment. And it was just like, wow, we're able to help somebody in such a way. It just blew our minds. Yeah, it's uh, and that was a point where we realized, you know, we could do a lot of good with this uh, Barbell Life movement, and I think that was really the the start of the movement. Um, you know, we wanted to show show the, the industry as a, as a whole, not just the industry, but like the 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 health and fitness community that, you know, this lifestyle can be a positive thing, and uh, you know, there's so many good people, and you know. We all come in different shapes and sizes. It's not about just being who's the biggest or who's the strongest, you know. We're all on the same journey to improve ourselves and, you know, meet our goals and exceed them and make new ones, you know. And that's what it's all about. And, um, you know, that whole, uh, that whole situation definitely changed the course of, of the barbell life. So, um, you know, I, I thank you for that, Kurt. I mean, I know it wasn't intentional, but... Well, I thank you at the same time because I think that was a big turning point for me too in how I looked at things and how I kind of viewed the world, you know, I was just like, the fact that all these people, you know, could come together, I was like, you know, you know, it doesn't hurt for me to be a good person too, like maybe I should start doing more positive things, you know, and that's what, that's what keeps me with the barbell life is just always like, it's always positivity. And we can do great things with that. That's why I love it, man. Yeah, that's that's our goal, man. We're gonna be spreading that message. I mean, it'll be it'll be a worldwide thing eventually. Um, we, we've always tried to like put out that positive message, no matter what walk of life you come from. If you're here trying to get gains, we support what you're doing. You know, in the community, so much you just learn from seeing other people do stuff. You're motivated by other people, you know, just doing stuff. So it, it's become good, and we've just tried to keep that message going. Yeah, and it'll never stop. That's what, you know, that's what that's what this Barbell Life movement is about. Um, real quick, we, we kind of – oh, go ahead, Carla. No, I was just going to say that Crip made a really good point. You know, there's so many, like, mean people out there in the world that can, you know, can – kind of traumatize us to think that, you know, not to trust people or not to think that they're good people, but when you see things like this happen, it kind of restore your faith in humanity, and, you know, I know exactly where he's coming from with that, so um, I really appreciate that statement, actually, and you know yeah. I love you from the start, too, Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Prip, uh, we kind of we kind of skipped over something, and I want to rewind real quick. Um, one of the things you know you told me when I asked you about you know what what, what your situation was is uh, you you, were, you told me that several things actually you know some of the ailments you had been uh, suffering from you know you had mentioned disability. 
Can you touch on that a little bit and tell us, you know, what your background is with all that? Oh, well, uh, this goes back to birth, uh, born 1993, and uh, about four years, you know, I was about four years old, my mom had noticed that I was tripping, falling a lot, tripping over my own feet. And uh, she was, and she already knew that my my biological father was inflicted with muscular dystrophy. So when the updated uh, the updated DNA test came along, she was like, "I'm gonna get him tested. You know, we're gonna draw blood. We're gonna find out and get to the bottom of this." So that's what we did. And uh, turns out I had uh, Charcot Marie II type 1A. And it's, I mean, on the spectrum, there's 40 different types of muscular dystrophies. On the spectrum, it's one of the least dangerous, I would say. I would say it's 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 very low. It's a slow, progressive uh, neuro or neuromuscular disease, which means if you know anything about muscular atrophy and dystrophy, it knows that uh, the body uh, deteriorates the muscle. It goes away. And it's also a neurological disease, which means... Uh, Basically, you have proteins in your body. Uh, you have these. Uh, you have nerves everywhere, and they have proteins that coat the nerves to keep them protected and insulated. And uh, the thing is, I'm missing the proteins in certain areas, so the messages, the electrical messages, are delayed or slowed. You know, ultimately hindering the progress of muscle growth, along with. Uh, you know, the neurological side, like tripping and not being able to catch my step, or, you know, it also hurts the equilibrium. I have terrible balance. Um, in, uh, in, while I was 12 or 13, I had my first surgery on Achilles lengthening, which is where they take three incisions in the back of your ankle, they cut it, and like a rubber band stretches when you cut it in half, or an old uh, bungee cord. It stretches even further because there's less tension on it, so they cut the tendons and let it stretch out. They did it on both of those, on um, both feet, and then later they came back and completely broke my feet down. Uh, I have 12 staples in my left foot, and I have eight, I believe, eight in my right. I have uh, three pin, uh, three pins in my left foot, and I don't think any in the right. And I also have a, a, a plate in my left foot. Um, and it's also been fused. It's a big uh, reconstructed mess. So I had oh I had three of those surgeries right after that, and uh, they also found I had scoliosis too. So I mean, uh, it's very minor, uh, not really a race for concern, but it you know I also goes along with the muscular dystrophy giving me issues every now and again. So basically, having all these issues. It also affected my self-esteem. Um, how am I, you know, how am I to go and create a living for myself? What am I to do? You know, I was a very negative person growing up, and uh, then I found weightlifting, and it changed everything. You um, so, on that go same ahead. note, um, John Lewis asks, how has uh, what has weightlifting done to help your condition? Well, in in many ways, it it if let's see how do I put this the the side effects of not lifting. Let's put it this way: if I didn't lift and I just sat at home and was disabled and filled that stereotype of not doing anything, it comes on quicker. The the thing the the muscular atrophy and just you know the weakness comes on quicker. So with working out, I'm able to keep on top of it. And maintain. I feel like they. You know, I haven't had any scientific proof or anything like that. But I feel like I'm more able to maintain and get better rather than going the other way. I, I feel like the more I can build and the more I can gain in in any way, you know, you know, whether it just be upper body, lower body, wherever my muscles are gaining at, it's helping. So anything I can do, fitness related, is always a plus. For my condition, so you're seeing you're seeing benefits from being in the gym. Absolutely, if I'm not in the gym, if I haven't been in the gym, um, like even just little stuff around the house, I'll notice just isn't quite the same. You know, if I stay on the couch and sleep and bum off, you know, throw a pity party because I'm feeling real down that day. You know, I just 
I, it, it's, it's a total bring down and then I get stuck in it but when I'm out working out and moving and doing stuff it, it, I feel like I have more energy I have more power I can do stuff and it's it's a whole other world it's like five cups of coffee like in your face and you uh, you said you've gained about 30 pounds since you started working out right I know Larry's got that picture yeah see at first I didn't do it the right way I won't say <laughs> I didn't start out the right way. I started out eating mm -hmm. McChickens. I ate a lot of McChickens because I heard that you need to eat, 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 eat. And that's the only thing I heard. Like, little homie, you need to eat to get big. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to eat. So every time I go out to eat, I eat like five McChickens. And I just kept on it. And then, you know, I started paying attention, learning that you need to eat not fried chicken, you know, nothing like that, none of that processed bull you know, you need to eat clean, lean meats like that. And I started eating beans, clean chicken. I went down to my local, uh, my local uh, butchery, I guess you call it, and I'd get boxes of chicken. You know, I just start, I'd bag it up, throw it in my freezer, and that's what I would eat. I would just eat solid chicken. So you start cleaning it up, and uh, I'm guessing you're you're kind of leaning out more now. Yeah, I've uh, I haven't focused so much on. Uh, on actually gaining now that I'm up to 140, I want to fill out. I feel like I need to fill out my 140 before I do anything else. Like, I'm at a certain level. I've, I'm up. I feel like my body has put itself into a change to where I was just, like, always skinny. And now I'm, like, I'm looking thicker. You know, the, the gains have gone up and everything. So I want to, like, really fill out 140 before I, I make the decision if I want to, like, cut or something. But mm -hmm. I think for me, it's always like permeable. It's going out there and, and trying to get all the gains that you can get, you know. So at the same time, is I want to maintain and just do good. I just want to smash food all the time. So um, David Huck asks, what's your nutrition like, or do you have any program that you're following? Um, sometimes I like when I get after I've been in the gym and I've worked out all the, like, say I've been, I was out for two weeks because I was sick and then I wanted to take a week off to get, like, healthy again to get back in the gym. I went and worked my ass off and I was burned out real quick, you know, severe soreness for, like, three, four days. And I was like, I better slow down. But when I'm, when I'm in it and I'm going, I like to, like, T Nation. I, I'm pretty sure you guys have heard of T Nation. Mm -hmm. Uh, I like to follow, I, I got on there and followed some of their 5x5 uh, five five programs, and then I started into a 3, I mean this is mostly for bench, uh, I, I specifically just enjoy training for bench, uh, I like to do legs as it works for me, because uh, I do stuff out on a farm and everything, and my legs go fast, if I train my legs, it, it don't take a whole lot to get it there, so I don't necessarily look, like push my legs as much as I probably should but I always try to stay in that that five by five program um, you know 80 percent I think I think that's what uh what Carla I mean when she trains for like the strong man stuff or strong woman uh, she would train at like percentages and you know, working on stuff like that now nutrition I'm getting better I'm getting better at that I'm eating cleaner trying to focus on chicken breast, uh, I like rice now, like I have to have like wild rice, I can't do plain rice, I don't know about you guys, but I can't do plain rice, <laughs> um, and uh, you know, getting the vegetables in there, I work out on a farm now, and I'll be bringing home a lot of good organic food, so I'm working on it, getting better. Yeah, that's what it's about, man. It's constantly learning and constantly adjusting and improving, you know, you got some people that they just, they're knuckleheads. They just try to keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results, and it doesn't work that way. I mean, even look at Olympia. These guys, you know, been training for years and have, you know, even, you know, Mr. Olympia, the, the guy who's winning year after year, every, every time he goes back into prep, he's constantly adding something different or changing up his diet or, you know, he's, he's improving and trying to add more muscle, so um, that's what it's about, constantly improving in, in life in general, you know. Um, let's see. 
So, uh, what was I going to ask? Brain fart. Are you getting more questions? While I think, while I try to remember what I was going to ask. Yeah. Um, Chris, uh, Christina Teeters asks, um, other than gains, what has lifting done for your life? Oh, it's a, it's a big mental thing. Uh, really big. Uh, severe, uh, pretty much stopped smoking. I haven't smoked in a long time. I smoked cigarettes. And, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, even, not even that, just, uh, uh, since my mother passed away, I went back and forth through a lot of emotions and everything. And uh, anytime I found that I was upset or frustrated on bills or whatever it might have been, uh, I had my friend. My friends would always, you know, they knew me as like I'm the lifter now. They didn't get on in it as much as I. Once I was into lifting, I was into it, and they they would say, "Hey, just go to the gym or you know, go home." Get on your bench, fucking do some, excuse my language, do some push-ups or something, you know, do something. And uh, I found myself uh, in those situations where I'd be frustrated or upset or whatever, and I would just work out. Um, I remember an instance I had a uh, I had a really bad disagreement with a family member out here, and uh, it was it was getting pretty pretty high rate, and uh, I was at a friend's house and. He comes into his kitchen and he's like, "What are you doing, Crip? What are you doing on the floor doing push-ups?" Where I was already in like my second set, I was busting out like 15 at a time. I was mad. I was mad. And uh, after I got done, I was like, you know, you know, I'm not so mad anymore. You know, and it really changed things. Uh, it also changes how I feel about myself uh, when I when I go to the gym and I work out and. I feel like I've done something positive for myself, um, and not only for myself is that you know being with the barbell life, I can share this with you guys too, and that makes me feel good too. That maybe something that I put out there might inspire somebody. I get a lot of messages, you know, might inspire somebody to to do something different with their, you know, or do something new, or even take that step in the right direction. So. Uh, me working on myself and helping others, it, it's like there's nothing greater at this time for me. There's like no other high that I'd rather be on. Yeah, lifting, uh, lifting weights is definitely therapy. I mean, just personally speaking, some of the hardest times of my life, uh, I don't know what I would have done if I didn't have a gym to go, you know, burn off that stress and clear my mind, um, you know. When my when my grandparents passed, that was hard for me. Um, going to the gym helped. Uh, relationship issues, just just stress in general. You know, a bad week, a hard day on the job, whatever the the case may be. And I tell you what, that gym just makes it melt away. Even if it's just temporary, you know, the endorphins kick in and do their job, and you feel good. You know, you de stress. You, you know, your mind is a little clearer. Life isn't so bad, you know. So, I definitely feel you on that. Um, I had a question actually. Uh, this is what I was trying to ask you earlier before I freaking had that brain fart. Um, how how did you end up in the barbell life anyway? Like, how did? What's the story behind that? Well, I uh, I was actually sitting at my friend's house, and this kind of this kind of goes together with how I started overall. Period at all, even lifting. Um, <clears throat> I was sitting at a friend's house, so my, actually I'd, I'd prefer to call him my brother, because he is more of a brother to me, um, and his friend, his friend brought over this weight bench, got on this weight bench, and he's like, you know, you should get on here too, we're all here working out, why don't you get in and get your ass in here, you know, it's a, he's like a big brother to me, he's going, hey, get your ass in here and, and, and try to throw some weight around, you know, he understands my physical ailments, but he's like, I want you, he's always about, you know, don't let that stop you, don't let that slow you down, pushing me. And I was like, all right, you know. And he had mentioned, you know, he said, Crip, you could be that first guy with muscular dystrophy to be a bodybuilder or a, a power lifter or strongman or whatever. You could be the best at who, you know, of who you are and what you do. And I was like, you're right, you're sure right. And then, uh, 
then I was like stuck on it. But I had I was sitting at his house after a workout, and I was just uh, I was just looking through phys, uh, fitness stuff. You know, this is right when I just first heard of C.T. Fletcher. I didn't know who C.T. Fletcher is. I don't know who any of those guys are. I don't know Kai Green. I don't I don't know any of those guys. And uh, I was in there looking it up, and um, it actually on Facebook uh, suggested groups. And it came up, and it said it showed the barbell life. And I was like, that is sweet tits right there. I said, that is cool. And uh, I was like, well, let me, let, me, uh, let me see what they're doing. And I, I you know, sent the request. Within, uh, shit, probably a couple hours I was in, and I just started checking it out. And I was like, and this is the first fitness group I'd ever been in. I'd never been in any other fitness group, so I, I don't. Really, I didn't understand uh, where a lot of these people were coming from. Where they were like, "This is the best group ever." That I'm like, "Well, I just got here. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but this is pretty cool." So I stuck around, and then I started putting myself out there, and and that's been like happily ever after for the most part. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so I got saying no. Um, Char uh, Michael Charles asks, "What is your biggest inspiration?" Oh, man, my biggest inspiration. I guess so. I guess so. What gets me going the most? Huh? What person? Oh, man, that's a tough one. I mean, I do enjoy a lot of the celebrities, um, but my biggest inspiration uh, would be my, like, my mom. My mom, uh, my mom was a strong woman. She had uh, cancer. But, you know, she taught me to be the man I am today. So even though she isn't with us now, I always think back, you know, if I want to skip the gym or if I'm feeling lazy, you know, she's like, Mama didn't raise no quitter, you know. And uh, I'm also very inspired by uh, Zach. Zach uh, Childers. Oh, I think Childress. Yeah, Childress. Yeah, that guy. That guy is a beast. Um... Uh, Eddie Hall. Actually, Eddie Hall would probably be the number one celebrity inspiration. I mean, that guy's a monster. If you don't like Eddie Hall, then I don't know if we can be friends. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, I mean, as far as, as celebrities and people that we all know, that would probably be it. Eddie Hall, hands down. Awesome. Yeah, we're going to actually get um, uh, Zach on the show. He's on the he's on the list of people we want uh, to bring on. So we'll uh, make he's, sure. he's a huge inspiration. Yeah, I've seen I've seen his videos. I'm like, man, this kid. Uh, 110 percent. Um, speaking of, uh, you had mentioned your friend saying something about being the first bodybuilder and powerlifter with muscle muscular dystrophy. Um, I remember a while back you were planning on doing a, a powerlifting meet. You were going for a record. Tell me about that. Um, yeah, last last fall or last actual last summer, uh, I was in the middle of coaching little league, and uh, I was just after a practice, I looked it up because I seen somebody else who was like, you know, you should look into it, and I was like, all right. So I uh, I asked a couple. I think I asked Jeff Jeff Trat or Trattenberg. I, I don't want to butcher anybody's name. I'm sorry if I butcher your name. Uh, but yeah, he said he said look up a uh, uh, your local. Uh, what do they call it? It was the APF. It was the American Powerlifting Federation, uh, and uh, or maybe it was just for Michigan. And I looked it up, and they said that they had a disabled bench. It was a disabled bench only, and I was like, wow, you know, I didn't know that. That was something that people had already catered to, uh, disabled powerlifting. And so I was like, I'm going to join and I'm going to do this. You know, uh, I, I think it would be a great goal to have, uh, something to keep me focused and keep me going and thriving to be in the gym, making gains, not only for myself, but I'm going to go out there and put myself out on the stage, you know, to lift and be the best I can be. And uh, I was all set to go do that. And then... Um, Seven. It was seven weeks. Seven weeks before 
uh, what would have been my my first meet, I uh, crashed a motorcycle out front here, and I broke my collarbone. So that was pretty much end of that, the whole uh, idea of doing that whole powerlifting meet, and I thought, you know, I thought it was over. You know, being that I was already physically disabled, you know, I thought a broken collar, but I've never had a broken bone like that. I thought it was over. I'd never, you know, a bench was my strong point. I'd never be able to do that again. So I was really down and about about that. And how did you uh, how did you push past that injury and you know get to where you're at now to where you're lifting again and you know? Well, I got a uh, I went and seen a specialist, uh, uh, athletic specialist or whatever, and uh, sat down and talked with him. He recommended that I have a surgery done on it. To align all the, it wasn't, it was cracked. It was, it was like this. It was pretty broke, and uh, he suggested that I get surgery. And I'm like, I've had surgery before, pal, and I am not a fan of surgery. I don't like going under. You know, my mom's not around anymore, so that's even more sketchy. Like I did it with a bunch of people by my side, and you know, granted, I still have my grandparents. I'm like, I'm not interested in that. So. They, he said, give it a thought. You could let it dry. You could let it heal properly. Just let it naturally heal. Don't move around. Hope it goes back into place. And it, it went back into place. It grew back together, and everything was fine. Uh, he, I have a problem with not listening to doctors, and that's probably not a good thing, especially being in the uh, weightlifting world. But I started to. He said, you know, you can move into it until it starts to hurt or be sore, and then back off. And I would go at it a little bit after that and I would start getting, I would move up. At first I started benching, my max at that time was 105 pounds. I pushed it one time and I was super stoked to get triple digits. I thought I was set for my meet. So I had started at like, damn, those motorcycles are loud. Sorry folks, I live on a highway. Oh, man. I guess uh, uh, they, uh, I started at 30 pounds. 30 pounds, just benching it for reps, you know, volume, just trying to stay maintained at least. And I started moving up, moving up, moving up. He said, you can drop the sling and everything, just work slowly at it. And uh, there for first three months uh, when I'd lift, I'd still have, like, that real sketchy feeling like, oh, I don't know, this feels kind of weird. Unstable. Yeah, it, it, it just, like, I almost feel like it could have just broke again. So, you know, I'd back down and... Uh, eventually it's just gotten better, and now to this day, it, it really doesn't affect me. Uh, other than when I got a tattoo, I got a little bit of a tattoo touch-up, and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's actually, it's all fine, and uh, I'm on my way back up to triple digits. Are you going to try for uh, that record again, or what? Uh, actually, they discontinued uh, the disabled bench uh part of the program, so uh, we talked about, I think we talked about this uh, in the winter time. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm just going to go out there and go raw, just go in what everybody else is in, I'm just going to go raw, put it up there, it's just for me anyways, you know, I mean at the end of the day, I'm only going out there and doing what I can physically do, and I'm not going out to impress anybody. I'm just going out there to put my name out there. You know, I can meet some people, uh, get some tips, watch how they do it. You know, there, it's, I, I see nothing but positivity from it. So that's something I still am working towards doing. Yeah, that's awesome, man. You, you just that's you go out. Huh? Go ahead, Carla. I said that's how I feel sometimes when, you know, when I go to compete. I know that, you know, sometimes I don't have the implements to train with for some of the events, so I, you know, I feel doubtful about them, uh, but I still go, and even if I don't place or I don't win or whatever, it's just fun, and it's just another day of lifting with, like, some super badass people, and I enjoy every single moment of it, no matter what the outcome is. Most definitely. Yeah, it's definitely uh, an awesome experience, and like you said, you know, you're just going out there and you know, it's it's more of a, a challenge to yourself than anything else. Um, excuse me. Now, I know you said APF, but uh, Google the other powerlifting organizations in your uh, your state. 
because uh, there's probably more, more than likely. Uh, most most states have several different um, uh, organizations who put on events, so definitely look into that. But um, you definitely got to keep us posted about the the your what you do in the show and like post it in the group and you know take some pictures and videos and all that good stuff so we can see and support you. So. Oh, absolutely. Um, Speaking of uh, events, you went to Arnold's recently, right? Oh yeah, oh and, yeah. Uh, you said you uh, you ran into some some fellow uh, barbell lifers. Tell us about that. Oh yeah, that was uh, that was like a, a cloud nine moment in this whole like journey. Um, I was actually I was I was able to I had been saving up and able to afford to make this trip. Uh, I'm from Michigan, and to drive down to Columbus, Ohio, uh, I was very fortunate. My aunt lives down there, and she said, come down here. We'll put you up. You got a place to stay. You know, we'll feed you and all this. And I was like, dang, you know, that saves me a couple hundred dollars on, you know, getting a hotel just to stay by myself, you know, and everything. So I got to stay with family. And, uh, I, and this is the first adventure I've never just taking an adventure by myself just to go do something by myself so it was a very uh, it was very cool for me to go out there and do that by myself but uh, yeah the Arnold was great I got there on a Thursday night I went Friday morning and uh, uh, I ran into probably five or six people in the first day uh, just in lines, and I would just be like, Ray, I had never been to the Arnold, they didn't know what to expect, uh, so I'm just walking around, just kind of taking it in and everything, and I want to say, oh yeah, on the first day, I was able to link up with, uh, I got together, oh, what's his name, oh my goodness, I can't believe I'm forgetting his name right now, Justin Wheeler, Justin Wheeler, like really super ripped Justin Wheeler. I'm sure you guys have seen his photos. Uh, I met up with him, and he was, like, starstruck to meet me, and I was like, oh, I think it's pretty awesome to meet you. And, you know, uh, Gina Cavallero, I believe is her last name, uh, I met her, like, as soon as I walked in the door, you know, she was right there. And uh, I'd be standing in line uh, to meet these, you know, famous people, and people would just come up to me and like shake my hand like I've seen you on the internet you know I know who you are you know I found inspiration and motivation in uh, what you bring to us and uh, you know it'd be like a group of people who might come through and be like yeah dude I've seen you on the internet and I'm like holy shit I didn't know this was such a big deal you know I'm just little me out of a shitty little town in Michigan over here just to see what these guys are doing and I, was, I felt so welcome you know, when you're standing in line to go meet somebody famous, and you got people coming up to you, and you got the people that are you, you're standing in line with looking at you like they should know who you are, like, I was like, my ego is through the roof, you know, I couldn't help myself. And uh, I ran into Christine uh, Smith, she was there with 5% with uh, Demaya, and little Demaya and her, and her dad had come through the line, because I'm a little guy. And there's lines, so everybody's coming through. So I, like, gave everybody space to walk through so they didn't feel like they had to push through. I said, just come on, people. And she had come through, and I said, I just, I, I just don't know what come over me. I, like, grabbed her by her shoulder, and I said, come here. I know who you are. You know, I said, you were going to take a picture with me. And then, her, you know, she looks up, and her dad's like, oh, holy shit, it's crib. And it was just, it was an amazing experience. I mean, yeah. it wasn't even about the celebrities. It was about the people that knew me, and I got to meet and know more about them. Yeah, it's. Uh, I saw the pictures you posted and the videos, and I could tell how you know elated you were. That's a pretty awesome experience. We plan on doing, um, you know, in the future, we plan on having like booths at these events yeah. and you know, trying to get the coolest trying to get as many members together as possible, you know, wearing the uniforms and all that. So that's pretty good. Shout out to Kristen and Maya, Powerhouse Princess. Um, Another question that we have here that, that fits in there is um, uh, from our good guy, uh, it's a Big Binge Steve here. He asks, what comic hero are you 
and why? Why? Oh man, you know, I didn't really grow up around comics a lot. Um, <laughs> I've always I adopted the name Crip, and a lot of times, uh, I mean. Don't get me wrong, it's pretty cheesy, but I enjoy using the pickup line about, you know, you know, you can drop your Superman because I'll be your crypt tonight, you know. That was a good one. So, uh, um, a Superman was a big influence. I also liked the original Batmans uh, growing up with Michael Keaton and stuff like that. But I'd have to say it would have to be Goku because when I get in the gym and I get focused, I just... I, when I get the pump in and I, and I and I feel like Arnold, you know, I just I just feel like I could just go Super Saiyan, you know. You could just rip out of your shirt and, you know, destroy another planet with all this energy and power. So I'd have to feel like I can relate the most with Goku. That'd be my favorite. Tell us real quick, since you mentioned it, how did you get that nickname anyway? Um, Crip is short for crippled. They're plain and simple. Uh, wow. Yeah. Never yeah. knew that. Believe it or not, it is short for crippled. Uh, I used to be called Crazy Legs. Uh, I, I wore leg braces for a while, so it was Crazy Legs. Uh, and then one day it came on like uh, Crip. And then, uh, you know, everybody would ask me, you know, oh, you can Crip walk? Are you a gang member? I was like, no, no, it's not gang affiliated at all. You know, um, I said Crip is kind of like short for crippled. And, you know, it was something that stuck with me for a long time. It was back in, like, junior high. You know, it was just something that one of my friends made up, and it just stuck. And then, actually, to this day, there's a lot of people out here that if you say Zach, by the way, my real name is Zachary. And uh, there's people out here that don't know me by my real name at all. They have no clue. But if you say, if you say Crip, they're like, oh, yeah, I know who that guy is, yeah. So, uh, it's something it's that in the group. if somebody mentions Zach, no one's going to know who we're talking about, but if they say Crip, everyone's like, oh, yeah, yeah Crip, Crip, Crip. Yeah, yeah, I actually have Crip tattooed on the back of my neck, so, oh, wow. branded, branded for life. I, I got that when I was 18, you know, all them smart decisions. So, this is what we're going to think of you now when, when they say Crip, you know, Crip yeah. power, like, oh, okay. yeah, if I wasn't uh, too worried about getting kicked out of my gym, I'd do more of that. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, when you 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 recently, uh, not too long ago, got a gym membership for the first time. Oh so yeah. You went from you know working out in your room with the with the makeshift bench to you know the newer bench to actually going to a real gym. Um, how was that experience? Because it must have been you know way different than what you were used to. Oh, yeah, I feel like that was like my Super Saiyan moment. You know, I had evolved. I had evolved from just nothing, uh, from an idea. You know, it just came as an idea, lifting in somebody else's room. And uh, I worked my way up, and I said, you know what, if I'm going to be serious about this this uh, powerlifting competition, then I should, I should get in here to the gym and start uh, training in these accessory movements, uh, and do uh, do like supersets that are more functional for the movements that I need to be making. And uh, uh, my buddy Gerald, Gerald Schramm, he's in the uh, group. He uh, he said, you know, why don't you come down here to any time? Check it out. And uh, also my buddy uh, Alex Severnhaus, you'll see him. Uh, I don't think you'll see him as much. He uh, He's always out getting yoked. That's what he always refers to, getting yoked. I, I enjoy that term. Uh and they got, uh, you know, they uh, they were there when I first got in there, so they were kind of like my tour guide, you know. When I got first got in there. I was all about, I want to hit this, I want to hit that, you know, I want to try this. What does this feel like? Can I do that? You know, and you'd see me, yeah, you know, I'd post videos of doing like push-ups on a Bosu ball or you know whatever it, it would be, just trying to do different things. And I had. Uh, I had those two really keep me straight and keep me focused on things I should be doing. Uh, they gave me a lot of tips about keeping my elbows in. Um, when I do, like, uh, bar curls, to, you know, go all the way down, let yourself stretch, and, you know. But at the same time, sometimes you want to, you know, keep tension, you know. Um, 
and they were able to help me a lot getting started and settled into the gym, uh, teaching me a little bit about gym etiquette. I understand that mirror space is very important. Uh, I almost found out the hard way when you get the, uh, the old dirty looks from the guys, you know, when you cross their mirror space, they're like, oh, I'm like, oh, man, I didn't mean to offend you or nothing. I didn't know. Um, but, yeah, being in there and then uh, actually broadcasting from there, I mean, it's nothing to shoot videos at home with my loud music and I can slam weights or do whatever I want to do, but at the gym, you know, you got to have a little bit of respect for the people around you. So, uh, but yeah, it was like a big playground to me. I thought the, the new gym was amazing. I love it. Anytime I can come here now. Yeah, I was going to say, it probably felt like a, a kid in a candy store. Um, Absolutely. You mentioned uh, Gerald Schramm. Is that Jenny's husband? No, that is not. Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, no, I don't think they're at all related. Uh, oh. At all, but uh, yeah, he a young guy like me. He like 22, 23. But uh, yeah, he, he, those two uh, and my buddy Andy Libera. You'll see him probably on a lot of my posts. Uh, he's my friend who's got the prison gains, so he was able to, in essence, bring me that kind of. Uh, world to uh, what I was doing so uh, oh, he was also he was also a big help in the gym too alright so we got we pretty much covered uh, all that is Crip um, you know we, we are, like I said we appreciate you know you, you being part of this movement we appreciate you being in the group um, no matter what I mean we've had our little dramas in the group and you've always you know, been loyal and, and represented this barbell life to the fullest. So, um, you know, I respect that. And, uh, you know, I, I look forward to doing some future things uh, uh, together, you know, possibly, you know, doing a kind of like documentary where we, we train together and, you know. Yeah, I remember we talked We talked very uh, smallly on that. A little, yeah, little I feel like to do that down the road, man. Uh, we got a lot of things in store, and you know, I like to put that on the list. So, um, as we wrap up, is there anything uh, you want to, you know, throw out there or touch on or plug or give any? Um, yeah. I just, uh, being that it is Mother's Day, uh, the only reason why I started was uh, my mom, and uh, today has actually been probably the easiest Mother's Day versus last year. It was a hot mess. Um, as I told you earlier, my mom had cancer, and uh, she had stage 4 ovarian cancer. And uh, the it, other than my friend simply saying that you could be the best with muscular dystrophy, I found that my mom had a real struggle with all the actual muscular atrophy that she, you know, the mus muscles that she had lost through chemotherapy. And... Uh, and she couldn't help herself, so I took it under, you know, my duty to, you know, she was strong for me for 18 years, so it was only, it was only my duty to uh, be strong for her, and that's why I started. She would sit there on the couch, you know, drinking her water, taking her medication, and I'd just be sitting there doing push-ups, like, yeah, Mom, I'm on my 10th set, and she'd be like, you know, you do it. So, uh... Shout out to your mom, man. Rest in peace. Um, I think that's fitting then that you're on the show on Mother's Day. Uh, I know she'd be proud uh, for many reasons. You know, the message you put out there, the people you inspire, you know, your determination and perseverance. You know, they're all big, big qualities and traits that I'm sure she'd be proud of. And I'm sure she had a big part to do with that. So, uh, you know, we thank her. From the barbell life, and um, uh, let's see. <laughs> Sorry, guys. There's somebody. They're doing some kind of work upstairs, so they're like drilling and all this crap. I thought some aliens were abducting Tony over there. All his talk about Area 51. I thought, dang, it's finally starting to collect on home. <laughs> yeah, um, they're, so they're doing some kind of construction, but um. You guys want to throw anything out there before we wrap up? Rip, I just want to say, you know, I have mad respect for you. And, you know, we've been tight from day one. 
And, uh, you know, I just love how you always rep the barbell life. And, you know, just thank you for being a friend to me. And uh, look forward to seeing, you know, a lot of progress. And uh, I'm just honored to know you. You over there crying, Carla? No, I got allergies, man. Uh, yeah. Sure, sure. <laughs> I, I, wanna, I do want to say happy birthday to Carla. Thank you. Happy birthday to you, Larry. Thank you. Uh, we share the same birthday. Yeah, uh, well, I just want to say, uh, just keep doing uh, a good job, Crip, and uh, don't listen to haters out there. Just keep being you. Just keep lifting every day, and you, you know, just keep on doing what you're doing. Yeah, the haters. The haters are never gonna go away. I mean, there's gonna be haters out there. We just can't let them get to you. Exactly. I mean, think about it. The way I see it, if you got haters, then you're doing something right. Cat Cat Williams says that. But I mean, look at some of the biggest people in the world. Uh, no matter how famous, how loved, how you know, uh, uh, innovative, anything, you always got someone who's hating on them. You always got trolls after them. You always got you know naysayers. You, you gotta put it into context. You may have. You may have a hundred uh, haters. You may have a thousand haters. These guys upstairs are haters, but uh, it's it has to be regardless uh, of the haters. But regardless of what's going on with the haters, you got to persevere throughout it all. I mean, you can't let others get you down. I tend to use hating as a motivational tool. When someone hates on me, I I, I look to prove them wrong by doing what they said I couldn't do. They say, hey, you can't do this. I get out there and I just say, well, watch me. Who's going to stop me? Exactly. And what I was trying to say is it's a small, however many haters you have, they're just a small percentage of the people that actually love you, though. That's all That's all that matters. So keep pushing, man. Keep doing your thing. You got anything, Vaughn? I don't even know if Vaughn's been on. Anyway, uh, go ahead and uh, take it. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. I've seen the picture for the past 30 minutes. I'm like, maybe he's taking a, a crap or something. No, nah, I don't. I don't. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I'm sitting here sliding through, pressing the pictures on the on the bottom of the screen as, as people are talking, so I can see them while they're speaking. But then, like three minutes ago, it says that I muted Crip. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh, shit. So I'm sitting there trying to, like, press the buttons in the screen and all kinds of other shit to go ahead and unmute him. And it's talking about, do I want to permanently block him? And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So, nah, my bad. Um, so, oh, my God. Oh my nah, God. just 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 keep doing keep doing what you're doing, man. You know what I mean? You 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 say you started at like like what one fifteen, and now you're at a buck forty. Just keep doing what you're doing, man. Keep eating what you're eating. You know, just keep it up, man. Because we we can definitely with your with the pictures you put up, we can definitely see a difference. Definitely. Will, do you got anything? Larry. Yeah. Un unmute Crip. I can't unmute him. He has to unmute himself. He, he has to unmute himself. You have to hit the microphone, Crip, so we can hear you. Yeah, there, there we go. That worked? Oh, I have no idea how to use this thing, guys. No, <laughs> it's the first time. What about that pesky drill, though? No, it's killing me. Um, all right, Larry, go ahead and uh, – well, hold on. Chris, thanks for being on the show. Much love. Um, Larry, take it away. All right, you guys, you know it's Mother's Day. So, you know, we, we release our shirt. So we're releasing a special uh, version of the shirt um, just in time for Memorial Day. Um, it's the Barbies. Um, it's going to, you know, feature – the you know American flag colors and everything, so we'll get a special discount for today and tomorrow 
uh, for Mother's Day, so check the email for that and check the group. Um, the, the other thing is we'll be also releasing our, oh, forgive me here, we'll be releasing our, uh, our traditional one. Um, some of you guys have seen this design and want it back, so we'll be releasing this on shirts also. And then, you know, brought to you by our special Barbell Nutrition. Um, we'll be releasing this um, hopefully at the start of next month here. Um, one announcement that we did do, which we'll be covering in the email, so if you're not subscribed to that, please get on the email list. Um, you can get on the email list by going to barbellnutrition.com or going to the fan page and clicking on sign up. Um, but plutonium and chain reaction will be all natural. Um, we stated this, so it won't have any of those junk or fillers in it. Plutonium will be your pre uh, your pre workout, um, and, and your post workout will be chain reaction. So definitely keep on the lookout for all of these, um, and we'll have them there shortly for you guys. Yeah, um, and shout out to TJ for looking up those designs. Malaria. Some, uh, shirt designs. Uh, we made the bar to go with the uh, USA. Um, but yeah, if you're not on that on that email list, you're not going to get the, the discount. You know, we told you we have that for a reason. We want to hook you guys up. If you're on the email list, you'll get the discount, supplements, shirt, and anything else in the future. So. Thanks for those who are on the list. Get signed up. Barbell, uh, Barbell Life fan page. And that's it. Um, and I do want to say thank you for, um, for knowing you throughout the year. Um, it's been good chats. Um, it's been good motivation. And thank you for being loyal to us, uh, no matter what the cause. I really thank you for that. Um, so continue. You know, we're here for your success and we'll always be you. You're one of the people that, as you know, definitely showed us that humanity is great. You know, when they get behind people, they can do a lot of great things. So thank you for that. I want to thank you guys for uh, for uh, sticking with me in uh, my low times. Really, um, I know I've I've uh, brought a little bit of uh, unnecessary stuff to you about stuff that really doesn't even matter, and I just want to. Thank you guys for always having my back, even in it, when I'm at my worst. Uh, it just shows, you know, how strong and how positive we are. And I, uh, I owe a lot to that to you guys. Well, for the Barbell Life family, man, that's what it's about. You know, we have our ups and downs, but in the end, we're, we're all, you know, we're all one, and we have each other's backs. So, um, on that note, till next week, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Crip. Thanks, everybody who showed up. I love you guys. We're out. Peace. Peace.